Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Study with Soumya. Hope you all are doing well. Well, first of all, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed this channel till now, make sure to subscribe. This channel is going to be very very helpful for your placement preparation. Right, so do subscribe the channel. Also, turn on the bell icon so that you don't miss any important update or opportunity from the channel itself. Well, in this video, we are going to do the discussion of the coding questions and the programming logic based questions as well that have been asked in the TCS coding questions or TCS NQT exam. Basically, so make sure to watch the complete video. This video will be very helpful for you. Also, share the video among your friends as well so that even they can know about these sort of questions because at least you will be getting the idea about the difficulty level. So, do watch the complete video, hit the like button if you like my work. So, without any delay, let's start with our first question. So, this is the first coding question. Again, very easy question. Just one thing I want to mention is that it's not like um, you cannot go with different approaches, obviously, for solving a particular problem. There are multiple approaches, optimized one, brute force one. But here in this video, I'm going to share, share the easiest approach because as sir, there is no time complexity thing or there is no such constraint uh, due to which you cannot go with the brute force one. So I'll be sharing the easiest one approach that can be understood by every one of you. And obviously, if you're having an optimized approach, you can code it and you can comment it right so again if you are having the optimized approach that is well and good but i'll be sharing the easiest one. fine so okay also make a note of that you have to press the final submit only then your code will be considered so if you are not pressing the final submit button and somehow you have missed it you forgot to do so then your code won't be submitted it won't be considered it won't be evaluated so make a note of that that is very important point also many problem many students are facing problems because now what the thing is there is a particular time allotted for each and every question so maintain the speed those who are having the Exam in upcoming days, be alert about this. Right, so without any delay, let's see our first question, first coding question. So basically, an array ARR is given to you having the size T. Fine, so it contains binary digits. So we can take an integer array, basically, it will be considering of binary digits where it is given that zero represents a biker running to the north. So zero will be representing a biker moving to the north side and one will be representing a biker moving to the south side, right? So this is what the question says. Now here it is given that your task is to count crossing bikers in such a way that each pair of crossing bikers and comma is like north comma south. They are moving basically in the north side and the south side. You have to, okay. This is also given that 0 less than equal to n less than s less than t fine is passing when n is running to the north and s is running to the south. So basically you have to find out a pair. You have to count the basically pair where n is running to the north and s is running to the south. So this is some constraint given. Well, let's understand with the help of this example, I can figure it out. Maybe uh, as of now, the question is not clear. So let's understand with the help of this example. So five is given where five is nothing but the size of your array. Now, these are the array elements given to you. Zero, where zero is representing north, one south, then again one zero, then one one. So this is the value of first element, value of second element, third element, fourth element, fifth element. Now you have to take the pair of count the pair basically you have to count the pair of n comma s in this given array so what we can do you can see we can take this zero and this one zero one so one pair is done then this zero and this one second pair is done then this zero and this one third pair is done again this zero this one so zero one again this zero and the last one so how many pairs has been done? Five. So you can see this is the same thing that we are getting in the output. So zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, I guess I have missed one. Mm, okay. Let me check it. So zero, one. We have taken zero, one, zero, one, three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. So that, that was a counting mistake. You can see we are having five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So you can see we are having 
five pairs so that is what you have to do now how you can count this pair just just basically you have to count the pair that first zero should come and then one should come in the sequence that's what you have to follow that first zero then one should come in the sequence that is what they are saying very simple approach that you can do very very easiest approach i'm gonna share and again you can go with the optimized one well so what you can do just take two loops like this for int i equal to zero see the question will be very easy and what i think is jab you don't have to jab yahan pe optimize karne ka zarurat nahi hai to jo bhi brute force approach aapke mind mein aa raha hai you can simply apply it because koi aisa time constraint nahi hai yahan pe fine so isliye main easy aapko bata rahi hu kyunki ye bhi work kar jayega so int i equal to zero i less than n i plus plus to aapne ek complete array tak ka you have taken this loop now next loop you're gonna take is uh one step ahead of i j equal to i plus 1 j less than n j plus plus where n is the size of your array if you want you can name it as t as well it's totally your choice now inside this for loop you can check what you can check this if e r r of i equal equal 0 right and e r r of j it means the first uh, the previous element that you have seen is Zero and the element now on which you are, uh, or basically I should say, i-th element is zero and the j-th one is one. Zero one pair you want, right? N comma s where n is zero and s is one. So n comma s pair you want. So you can simply check this condition if that is true. So you can take a count variable in c equal to zero and simply you can increment this. If this condition of zero one pair is matching, so simply increment the value of count again and again. And at the last, after coming out of this loop, when this loop condition is going to be false, after coming out of this loop, simply you can print the count value. let me show you the code so that it can be properly clear in your mind so let's move to the coding platform well so you can see here is our code so this n is denoting the size of our array here we can we are taking this as input next what we are doing is we are taking the array elements as input right and now this is our variable ans which we are taking for counting the pairs that we can make for n and And as right now, uh, as discussed in the logic that I was just telling with you, I was just sharing. The thing is, we can take two loops for int i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus, and another jth loop. Now inside this loop, what we're gonna check is that if ith element uh, which you have seen before is zero and the jth element on which you are is equal equal one, then simply you have to increment the value of answer. Right. So this is what you have to do. So if this condition is matching. uh simply increment the value of answer and you have to do this if this condition will be matching this value will be incremented and at the last after coming out of this loops we are simply printing the value of ans so you can see how easy that was the question was pretty easy now if you want me let me run this for you so that uh, there is no sort of confusion in your mind okay so Let's take the example that we just discussed. Zero one. Okay, that is zero one one. So you can see we are getting five as the output, right? So I hope the question is kind of clear to you, and that was easy as well. Well, let's move to our next question now. Okay, so here is our next question again. That is also very easy. Just the thing is, so the question says a party has been organized on a cruise. Fine. The party is organized for a limited time. T. So time t is given to you. The number of guests entering E I. So there is an array which is keeping track of the number that is entering and uh, like the ith uh, member which is entering or the guests you can say and leaving. So entering and leaving array we are having which is keeping track of the guests entering in the party and leaving the party. Well, so what you have to do the party at every hour is represented as elements of the array. So the task is to find out the maximum number of uh, guests which are basically present at the cruise at any given instance within t hours. So here, let's understand the same with the help of an example. So this five is basically denoting the value of t or t hours. So five hours you can consider. Well, they are starting. You know that array starts from zero, but as of now, we'll be considering uh, each particular index as an hour. So one hour, second, second hour, third hour. This is how we'll see. so for the first hour for the first hour let me explain it in a better way for you so for the first hour you can see 
we are first of all let me mention the entering array so this is our entering array 70513 and then we have another array that is leaving array right we have another array leaving array so this is entering one and this is leaving one so for the first hour you can say seven guests are entering and one is leaving so overall what do we have overall guests present at this first hour is six guests you can say for second hour for second hour what do we have so six are already present in the party and zero are entering so six plus zero that will be zero itself and two are leaving so six minus two equal to four we are having right for the second hour this is the status for third hour you can see five are entering so four plus five equal to nine and one is leaving so overall guest at third hour will be eight for fourth hour you can see what we are having is one is entering and three are leaving so six we are having for fifth hour for fifth hour what do we having that three are entering and four are leaving so overall five we have in the output we are getting eight because what is saying in your task is to determine or to find out the maximum number of guests present on the cruise at any given instance so you can see maximum number for first hour there was six guests for second hour there was eight guests third hour sorry for second hour there were four guests for third hour there were eight guests for fourth hour there were six guests for fifth hour there were five guests so at which instance there are the maximum guests this third hour you can see maximum were eight okay so maximum number of guests is what eight that's why we are getting eight as the answer well what you can do for this particular question is uh, let me directly show you the code and um, let me make you to understand the approach there itself so let's move to the coding platform directly okay so this is our code well first of all we are taking t which is the hours denoting and e entering array l leaving array so first of all we are taking t as input fine and then we are taking array elements of e as input then l as input right then you know one variable will be keeping track of updation in the number of guests so this is Addition will be done by s in my case. In uh, for this, I have taken this variable. For max, now I want to figure out. Or I want to determine. I want to print the maximum number of guests at a particular instance. So for this, we are having this max variable. Now what we are doing is we'll be taking a for loop, which will be starting from i equal to zero up to i less than t. So first of all, when the guests are entering, I have to update my s value as s plus equal to ei which simply means uh, if you are having any doubt it simply means s equal to s plus e of i right this is statement means that so what i am doing is as if guests are adding entering so i am adding this to my s variable and the next time itself the guests are subtracting or if let's suppose if any guest is leaving so for that particular thing i have done this operation s minus equal to l of i you know like leaving array is having the number of guests which is leaving so that's why here l of i we have taken and here e of i we have taken now in the same loop itself we have to check if at any instance s value has become greater than that of max so we have to update the value of max as s itself right and we have to do continuously till the time our for loop condition is true and at the last we are going to print our maximum element that will be holding the maximum number of guests right so that was the complete code let me run this for you so that you can get a complete sort of idea that what is basically happening so let's run the code okay so here if we are having the key value then our entering array element we have to enter so 5 1 3 then we have 1 2 1 3 4 we can see we are getting eight as the answer so hope that the question is clear to you now let's see some uh, programming or logic based questions as well that were asked in the tcs so let's have a look okay so that is very easy question you have to enter your answer only in numerical and that even in the box itself so these sort of questions will be asked and these are from the exams itself well uh, what we are having is we are having an integer number n equal to 7 or if you want like num equal to 7 then we are having n the integer variable truncate equal to num what operator this is what operator this is 
right shift right this is right shift operator right shift by 1 so if you are having something like this a right shift by b so what is the formula what is the formula a divided by 2 raised to b so the same thing we have to do here as well so num value is 7 divided by 2 raised to 1 so what you are going to get 3 you are going to get right because this is integer so we won't be considering the point value so 3 you will be getting so at the last we are simply printing the truncate itself so 3 will be printed so the correct answer that you have to fill in the box is 3 so that's it this will be the answer let's see our next question now so here we are having a for loop which is getting started from i equal to 0 i less than 6 i plus plus then we are doing now we are checking is if i equal equal 4 so if when i equal equal 4 you have to simply continue right so for only otherwise if i equal equal is like if this condition isn't true you have to simply print i value in the else part data script so as of now i is 0 write 0 in the box then 1 then 2 then 3 for 4, you have to continue. So, you are not going to write 4, 5. Then, when I will be 6, 6 less than 6, condition is 4. So, we will come out of the loop. So, this will be the correct answer for this question. Well, uh, I have.